The 1997 Mitsubishi Motors Badminton Horse Trials as always attracted an international field. 80 starters from 11 countries striving to win the first prize of £25,000. To take you through this year's review is Claire Balding. As with all major horse trials, Babington in fact takes place over four days. The first two are taken up with dressage and the riders this year had to cope with a rather different test. It was much more complicated than in years gone by, including a flying change in canter, which some coped with better than others. Now, one of the early riders into the arena was Linda Algertsen of Sweden on Lafayette and Linda represented Sweden in Atlanta. They went clear cross country, but this horse, as you can see, does a very nice dressage test as well. Well, so let's take you through the whole of the test. This is the third movement as they come down the center line and a bit of shoulder in to the left. The judges get a very good view of this from their position at the top of the arena. And then they circle to the left, 10 meter diameter. And as they come across at X again, a 10 meter circle to the right. A good even trot stride there by Lafayette. He looks a very easy horse to ride, a good dressage test, but 25-year-old Linda Algertson pressing all the right buttons as they do another shoulder in for the benefit of the judges. And now they change the rein in extended trot. You can really see there the suppleness of this horse and his obedience. He's not going too quickly at any one point, just lengthening those strides and back to working trot and the difference is quite remarkable when you see it done well. And now at F, a half pass to the left. The judges here looking for forward and sideways movement at the same time. And as they reach X, Linda Algertson just asked him to come back the other way again, half pass to the right. And then at M, back into working trot. And at C, medium walk. Again, the judge is looking for a nice, free, forward-moving walk. And as they reach H, the extended walk, changing the rein towards B. And then the rider gathers up the reins again. A nervous moment here, because sometimes the horses anticipate that canter might be coming up. And back into medium walk. Crossing across the arena and at L, halt and the rein back. One of the advantages of the horse trials test is that dressage judges can't actually see whether that rein back is straight or not. And then immediately into canter. Lovely rhythm there. And as they come round to A, a 10 meter circle to the left, still in working canter. Always difficult this when the wind is blowing hard, which it certainly was. Then at F, the transition to medium canter. And you can see the lengthening of the stride there. Back to working canter and coming up the new movement there. You could hardly see it, the flying change. So smooth. And now on the right leg. Moving into extended canter down that side. And at F, back to working canter. A lot of movement in canter in this new test. And then another 10 meter circle to the right. And the movement's repeated on the other side of the arena. Changing the rein in medium canter. And here's the second flying change. Coping with it certainly better than others. Now another extended canter down that side and nearly at the end of the test, which I'm sure will impress the judges, Dr. Bernd Springorum of Germany, General Nanny Grignolo of Italy and Angela Tucker, the one British representative. Up the centre line now and the final halt at G. Lovely square halt there to finish off with. 
The pressure was really on in the dressage this year because with a field of this strength, you really didn't have a hope unless you were in the top 10 after dressage. Now, Paddy Muir had some good form coming into this competition on Archie Brown, and they were ninth here last year. Good controlled test from them. And in fact, Paddy's got a very good badminton record. She'd been placed twice before last year in 1988 and in 1990 when she finished fourth. This is Blythe Tate on Chesterfield, the horse he chose to ride in the team in Atlanta. He left Ready Teddy, his individual Olympic gold medalist at home, and they got sevens for this movement, but in fact later in the test had a few very disappointing fours, so not quite up to the standard that one would expect from him. Mary King was riding Star Appeal, the horse she fell at the first on the cross country on last year. And as always with Mary King, a really good, even test. And Star Appeal looking very bonny and full of himself. And Mark Todd. Now, he had a difficult decision to make, winner of the Babington Trophy last year, but Bertie Blunt wasn't sound, and he chose KM rather than broadcast news, and as you can see there, the horse just doesn't look terribly level. And Robert Lemieux, these days, of course, riding for Canada, riding a former Mark Todd horse, just an ace, who has in fact been fourth twice here and fifth in the past, the horse that is. And a really good test here by Robert Lemieux. Now this is David O'Connor riding custom made for the United States of America. They nearly always produce a good dressage. He was well placed last year. Very elegant looking horse, custom made. And beautiful extension there. And here comes the flying change. Just the quality you'd expect from this combination. Now Ian Stark was last to go in the dressage on Stanic Ghost. He'd already been earlier on Arakai. This horse really did put up a good performance last year until they had two fences down in the show jumping, but that flying change going pretty well for them. And Stanic Ghost, such an energetic looking horse, really enjoying himself and behaving pretty well in the windy conditions. Coming up the center line for their final halt. Ian Stark looking very contented with that test and a big cheer from the crowd. Real favourite here at Badminton. Now it didn't go so well for some of the other riders. Poor Gary Parsonage here on Magic Rogue having a terrible time. This combination represented Britain in Atlanta and the horse has never really enjoyed dressage. Looking as if he definitely wants to get on with the cross country. And Paul Carr and Dixon, who'd already had to withdraw, get smart before the competition started. He's normally the one who doesn't behave himself in the dressage, now riding too smart. And it really wasn't her year because too smart just didn't want to know. And in fact, after that test, Karen decided to withdraw him as well, so she didn't have a ride at all for 1997. But for those that did have an enjoyable time in the dressage. They were certainly all up there. Ian Stark on Stanic Ghost, leading after the dressage on 46.2. Robert Lemieux in second on Justin Ace. And Linda Algertson of Sweden, her first time at badminton and well placed going into the cross country. But so was David O'Connor on Custom Made and all very tight. Only 3.2 penalty points separating those top five. Daisy Dick on Headley Bravo, great dressage test for them. 
and Mary King, well in contention on star appeal, as was Andrew Hoy on the grey Darien Powers. So just 6.2 penalties separated the top 10 at this stage. With heavy overnight rain and potentially slippery conditions underfoot, there was going to be little room for error. As always on Cross Country Day, a huge crowd gathered to watch the competitors tackle the 31 fences. Before the competition, we asked course designer and event director Hugh Thomas to give us an insight into this year's cross country course. Well, each year we normally reverse the direction of the course as compared to the previous year. So this year it starts out in front of Badminton House over the traditional Shogun seats, which are the first fairly inviting fence, and then a completely new obstacle at fence two. The Save the Children Fund complex is at fences three, four, and five two big log piles with the sunken road in between. And this is the first time really that the riders are probably thinking, ah, these are fences that are badminton fences as opposed to the everyday horse trial sort of obstacle. The log piles are pretty big and they'll need to kick on out of the sunken road to jump them. Then it's down to the Mitsubishi M. Now this fence was first introduced for the event two years ago, but this time I've slightly widened the two corners by the white flag leaving the right-hand side by the red flag exactly the same. It caused a little bit of trouble two years back, but I suspect it'll ride better this time as riders will be more attuned to the problems in front of them. Then we come to the Sirencester rails, the first big ditch on the course. They're a straightforward fence, a galloping fence, but really to find out whether the horse and rider really are brave and on song on the day. Across the Luckington Lane, Fences eight, A, B, and C, though the cleverer riders will just jump two hedges on quite an acute angle. Centre walk, nine and 10, been here for many years. We use this in both directions. These hedges as big as they're allowed to be, but they are straightforward and should prove something of a let up before the riders come on to the second Luckington Lane crossing. At that second crossing, they jump on and off the bank, but a new silver birch fence Two alternatives, both very narrow, one by the red, one by the white flag, and no easy way out at this fence. The Charisma Beam is a recreation of a fence that first appeared on a poster for the first ever badminton in 1949. I suspect in those days it was a much smaller piece of timber. Now it's an inviting fence over nine feet, just under three meters of open water. But it's followed by a sharp right-handed turn coming back to the zigzag, another completely new obstacle. A common enough type of obstacle on cross-country courses, but new to us here at Badminton. And then about 40 metres beyond that, on the left-hand bend, the Vicarage V. The corner on the right is as big as you're allowed to build corners, and the alternative on the left-hand side also involves a corner on the way out. Really, the interesting thing will be to see how the riders ride, how the, they ride the track from the Charisma Beam through the zigzag and on to the Vicarage V, because they'll all come up pretty quickly. Down to the Brampton Willow, that fence slightly changed this year, beautifully woven by Robert Yates from Lincolnshire, and we've made it into a willow bullfinch this time, which I think may make the horses jump it rather better, because it's off a downhill approach. The Gallant Hollow, is a traditional fence and it is a classic of its type, an old-fashioned coffin type of obstacle. You must jump it as slowly as you dare out of a very controlled, very impulsive canter and then sit very tight in case the horse overjumps the ditch in the bottom. A long run up through the park brings them to the shooting butt, another straightforward galloping fence before what is inevitably the worrying time as they approach the lake. At the lake, the direct route is a bounce of these round-topped uh, machine rails, followed by probably three or four strides through the water and directly on and off the jetty. The alternative out to the right-hand side is much smaller, takes much longer, one stride in between the first two elements, then they have to turn in the water, come back up the bank, and then back into the water again. I should think it'll be at least 20 seconds longer. The Mitsubishi pickups filled with flowers usually jump pretty well. A lot of people who come to Badminton for the first time are surprised to see horses jumping cars, but uh, they usually do it very easily. 
and then up into the north end of the park, well over halfway round now, to the Beaufort staircase. Three steps up, and then two alternative little houses, one slightly narrower and slightly bigger one on the left-hand side, or a longer route over the easier one to the right. I've deliberately made this fence a little bit easier than we have in the past, because they've just jumped a number of very difficult fences, but they still need a lot of impulsion to go up the steps. The little badminton drop is exactly the same as it was two years ago. There are at least three different places you can jump it. And again, the one watchword is not too fast, please. The opposite applies to the keeper's brush. A really big galloping feds, big ditch, big brush feds should be a very exhilarating feeling before the only real uphill run on the course, which takes them to the quarry. At the quarry, there's a bit of a departure from tradition. The site is, of course, the same, but for the first time, we're not using any of the walls. This time, it's tree trunks. A big tree trunk on the entrance to the quarry, landing on a steep slope. And the test will be landing in a balanced way and being able to ride over the other two tree trunks on a curving line. Here we have got an alternative for those whose horses perhaps don't fancy a biggish fence with a drop late on in the course. In Huntsman's Close, a completely new obstacle, the Huntsman's Halo. I wanted to have a little bit more interest in the latter part of the course, so a parallel rail to a stile is the direct route and there's a very easy way round over two uprights for those that want it. They then have to find their way through the trees to come out over the two huntsman's hangovers. Those, I think, hold few terrors for riders these days, unlike years ago when they were first designed. And then just two fences left to the colt feeder, and that's closely followed by the Mitsubishi garden. Both of these fences are quite big, so the riders still just have to sit up and balance their horses. But I hope that they'll cause little trouble, and certainly after the Mitsubishi Garden, and well, it will be a straight run home, considerable relief for all concerned. Before they tackle those 31 fences, though, they have three phases to complete. Phase A is the first section of roads and tracks over 5,940 metres and the riders aiming to complete it in a specific time. Then on to the steeplechase. Horse and rider expected to jump at speed over racing type brush fences. And again, they can't hang around. They've got to complete this in four and a half minutes. It's 3,105 metres. Then on to the longest section of roads and tracks. This is phase C, and it's nearly 10,000 metres. That's about six miles. The riders have to check their watches. They normally carry two because they have to complete this in 44 and a half minutes. Now, there are very few penalties usually picked up on the roads and tracks, but it does require accuracy and, of course, test the fitness of the horse. The horse then has a 10-minute break when it's looked over by a series of vets before it's allowed to start on the cross-country. And first rider out on the course was Leslie Law for Britain riding Capitano. Coming down towards the first fence here, the Shogun seats in the shadow of Badminton House. Safely away, and look at all those people, quarter of a million people come to Gloucestershire for cross-country day at Badminton. It's one of the biggest sporting events in the world. Down towards the parallel rails, the second fence, spread there of five foot nine. And quite a daunting prospect being the first one out on the course because you haven't had a chance to get any information back from the other riders about how certain fences are riding. This is the first combination on the course, the Save the Children Fund complex, down through the ha-ha, and Leslie Law really pushing on there to get the right stride to jump out. Now coming to the Mitsubishi M, and most of the riders this year thinking twice about which side they were going to go. Leslie Law setting the trend by taking the right-hand side and jumping three separate parts of it. Now, this was Ian Stark on his young horse, Arakai, owned by Lord Vesti, and by the same sire who bred Lord Gilleen, the Grand National winner this year. 
And Lord Galeen certainly stayed four and a half miles at Aintree. And Arakai looking to do exactly the same thing at Badminton. Here is the most famous fence on the course, the lake. Ooh, a little bit tight in there for Leslie Law, and he decides to then change his mind and go for the longer option. The straight option jumping straight through, and the longer one just having to wend their way round and coming out over the bank. And Capitano not looking quite as keen as he has in the past. They jump out over the Mitsubishi pickups. Here is Ian Stark and Arakai coming towards fence 12. The charisma beam then sharp, right-handed and back over the zigzag. And this horse really covering the ground, that's a thoroughbred in him. And going for the quick route, the corner at the Vicarage V really stretching out over that. Leslie Law and Capitano. Horse just beginning to look tired as they come towards the quarry. And Leslie, in fact, opting to take the long route here. The quarry a little more straightforward than it had been in previous years. And out over the log. He's really having to push on Capitano, not looking happy at all. 23-year-old Sally Ascot from Sirencester, and this horse owned by her family. Her first ever time at Badminton and coming to the second Luckington Lane crossing. And he just has a look there as he jumps off the bank and they run out of space and incur 20 penalties there at the second element. And that really is the difference between success and failure at an event of this class. But they come round for the second time this time he jumps it fine. Now Ian Stark and Arakai coming towards the end of their round and the horse still full of running. He's only eight years old. So much promise. Through Huntsman's Halo and round left-handed towards Huntsman's Hangovers. Oh, you want to keep your head down? Lovely shot there as he comes through. He is tanking on. He's going to be well under the time. Rudolf Scherer was the first competitor on the course for France. They were in the silver medal team at the European Championships and fourth in the team at the Atlanta Olympics. His second time here at badminton. Now, Anna Hermann for Sweden, a really bold, brave cross-country rider. She was fifth here in 1991 and ninth in 1995 setting out on home run just started for sweden home run the second and, and her cross-country riding has really been improved by tuition from lucinda green rudolf scherer coming towards the beaufort staircase three foot nine each of the steps and out over the house most of the riders felt that was going to ride extremely well and now on to the little badminton yeah. drop. The landing side, as you can see, pretty uneven. The riders really had to choose their spot. Anna Herman across the first Luckington Lane crossing, the big hedges there. And on to center walk. And this horse, now 15 years old, used to be owned by Vicky Latter. And Anna Herman seeing a really good stride there. They look like entry fences, those two. Now Sally Clark, one of the many Olympic competitors here. She was the individual silver medalist with this horse, Squirrel Hill. As they jumped through the Save the Children Fund complex. And Squirrel Hill really moving on there, a New Zealand thoroughbred. And he's pretty experienced these days as they come towards the Mitsubishi M and opt to go the right-hand side. Now Sam Lyle, only 21 years old, the top young rider in 1995. He won at Gawler that year as well, ninth at Melbourne, but he'll never have seen anything like this before. 
And oh, oh, what a shame. First fence fall there. The horse just getting in a little bit too close. The bridles come off. What a way to start your first ever badminton. Now coming towards the penultimate fence here for Rudolf Scherer. Still going well. And the time of 12 minutes 10 looking fairly generous as they jump out over the garden and head towards that finishing straight. Now Grey Spirit certainly didn't behave himself in the dressage, in fact reared up with Caroline Sizer. But she still decided to take her chance cross country. And you can see why, a really genuine horse. Making the Vicarage V look small. Sally Clark, one of the few New Zealand riders who is actually based in her home country. Coming towards the gallant hollow. Ooh, and Squirrel Hill just has a little look at the ditch but helps her out. And they're still intact. Through the gallant hollow. Sam Lyle reunited with Fox Ground Dusky Song, the bridles back on and they're coming towards the quarry, going the direct route and in fact going extremely well after that fall at the first fence. How frustrating that'll be for him. But he still will have learnt so much from his trip to Badminton this year and no doubt Sam Lyle will be back. Just coming now to Huntsman's Halo uh, where the riders either went for a short three strides or for a long two. It was a bit of an odd distance. And Sam opting for the long two, just losing his stirrup there but getting it back again. His leg never moved. And again a slightly tricky three strides there between the Huntsman's hangovers. Now Caroline Sizer and Grey Spirit just changing their mind there. There's enough room that if you land awkwardly over the bounce you can just decide to go the long route at the lake which we've seen some riders do at the last minute. Just getting into the deeper water there. It does get deep very very quickly in the lake. You've often seen horses go swimming there before. Another young rider now, this is 26-year-old Alexandra Morley for Britain on double trouble. And she's completed here in the top half of the field for each of the last three years. They had one stop last year. But went clear in 1995, coming to the first Luckington Lane crossing over on the angle very nicely. Down again to centre walk. Now the striding here is slightly odd. It has caused problems in previous years. The first hedge with a ditch before it and the second with a ditch after it. And Alexandra Morley making that look very easy. Now Linda Algotson who did that lovely dressage test on Lafayette just tripping as they come out of the sunken road and losing an overreach boot and looking to be going fairly steadily Alexandra Morley coming towards the quarry oh horse just found a leg there I don't quite know how going the longer route though and plenty of riders feeling that the longer route wasn't actually going to take that much more time and this late in the course perhaps it was a sensible option Linda Algotson having the worst of the weather it really started to rain very very hard making conditions extremely slippery and again Lafayette helping her out not very fluent at all, but that's one to wind back your video and watch again. Now to a very experienced rider, David Foster's represented Ireland at three Olympics in Los Angeles, Seoul and Atlanta. And he completed here on Dunnake Carnival in 1995. Out there over the zigzag. And again over the corner at the Vicarage V, 
making it look oh so easy. Linda Algertson having survived that nervous moment. Over the bounce and just hailing a cab, but out the direct route. What a bold horse this is. He really is being incredibly honest, just keeping going. Alexandra Morley coming towards the finish. And another clear round for her. She really does have a very, very good badminton record. Keep us fresh now, 23. David Foster coming towards the quarry and Danae Carnival just getting a little keen as they go for the quick route and you can see how much the conditions change during the day. Heavy rain one moment and then bright sunshine. David Foster just showing his experience there as Danae Carnival decided to take off before him. And this is one of the most beautiful horses currently competing, Darian Powers and Andrew Hoy. So much scope. And he's 11 years old now, Darian Powers. Andrew Hoy took him to Atlanta. They were 10th here last year. Andrew Hoy based in Britain, in Marlborough, in fact. Owen Moore coming towards the first Luckington Lane crossing. And going for those hedges on the angle. It is noticeable how much better Riders tend to jump on the angle now than they used to. Owen Moore possibly best known for falling off twice around Babington in 1995, but still continuing. And this horse was in fact in training as a racehorse, was trained by Henrietta Knight, so he'll be used to fences that look like this. And looking very keen there indeed to get on with the job, probably wishes he was back on a race course. They were 12th at Blenheim last year, and the horse actually was bred here at Badminton. Owen Moore, a reserve for the Olympic team in 1992. Second Luckington Lane crossing, and there they get that option right. Darian Powers still going extremely fluently for Andrew Hoy, who was in the gold medal winning team for Australia in both Atlanta and Barcelona. And Andrew Hoy so experienced. He's 38 now, deciding to go the long route at the quarry. I think because Darian Powers does cover the ground so well, he's pretty confident of making the time anyway. Incidental, still very keen with Owen Moore, but athletic enough to make that direct route at the lake, even though he was slightly close to the step up. And that nice, easy Mitsubishi pickup fence just for the riders to get their confidence back. Through Huntsman's Halo and Darian Powers making the striding look easy. And Huntsman's Hangover is built really for photographers and TV cameras because it looks so nice. Andrew Hoy checks his watch. And Virginia McGrath, the rain pelting down. It really was a matter of luck as to how the conditions were as you set out. And also a provincial score for Daryl Scape with Mrs. Holmes Rodham's Alfred of Church Farm. And she'll have had information back yeah, from David yeah, Foster yeah, about how the course was riding. The Irish with a pretty strong team here this year. And she was a member of the bronze medal. Irish team in 1995 and of their team in Atlanta. Incidental does look a tricky ride, but Owen Moore doing so well. The horse is constantly fighting the bridle, which does not make life easy. But he's obviously talented enough that it is certainly worth persevering. The Yellow Earl, another to go on the right hand side of the Sarantester Rail. Virginia McGrath coming towards fence number 17. This is the shooting butt, and it's an awful lot bigger than it looks. A spread of six foot three. Owen Moore has five fences left. I should think his arms are pretty sore by now. And he opts for two strides there in Huntsman's Halo. I don't think he had much choice, actually, the way the horse is pulling. 
but not far to go now, Owen. Virginia McGrath only 60 second after the dressage, but going extremely well cross country as they come up the Beaufort staircase. And with one third of the riders already home, the course seemed to be riding very well. Some had even said it was the most straightforward for 10 years, but as always, there were others who wouldn't agree. Now the first of the real contenders, David O'Connor, third after the dressage on custom made. Really well through the Save the Children Fund complex. And this horse custom made is a thoroughbred. He was bred in Ireland, now 12 years old and really experienced these days. They finished third last year, David O'Connor picking up time faults on the cross country. And he certainly won't want to do that this year, but not having a great spell of weather for his round. Just starting to rain again. He goes the right-hand side of the Mitsubishi M, but looking in fine form. Another American, Dorothy Kroll. And their chef to keep, Mark Phillips, will be looking on with interest. And she was the individual silver medalist at the World Games in 1994. Custom made coming to the Gallant Hollow. David O'Connor will have plenty of advice for his wife Karen O'Connor who's going later in the afternoon. A Blythe Tate MBE, the individual Olympic champion and on the bronze team on this horse, Chesterfield. And he had to make the decision to just ride one horse. All the international riders were restricted to one horse, and he chose this one. And Chesterfield, really athletic. Chesterfield and New Zealand obliged to over the second David O'Connor coming through the lake. And he's going the straight way, gets that absolutely right. Three strides in there and away. He really has got to get inside the time and he looks like he means business this year. Into Huntsman's Halo for Dorothy Crow. And the Huntsman's hangovers are actually a lot bigger than they look. They're four foot four inches each. And as we've seen, not a lot of room there up top. Long gallop towards home. Blythe Tate 
Coming to the second Luckington Lane crossing. And he's given himself slightly more room by going towards the left-hand side. And Blythe Tate does seem to be able to ride any sort of horse, rather like his compatriot Mark Todd, who unfortunately had to withdraw KM. We saw him looking slightly unlevel in the dressage, and he withdrew him on the steeplechase. Now, the riders have been slightly concerned about these three fences being so close together. But as you'd expect with a rider of this class, absolutely no trouble at all. Sees a long one at the Vicarage V. And Chesterfield going well. And one of the Swedish team members in Atlanta, Dag Albert, and he's based in Britain as so many of the international riders are in Kingsclear in Hampshire, makes full use of the gallops nearby, racing gallops, and has tried his hand at being a jockey in the uh, prep races for the Marlborough Cup over Timber. Just putting in and banking, actually, banking that fence coming out of the Save the Children Fund. Blythe Tate coming towards well, the lake. Now the bounce here is quite long. And just landing a little awkwardly, but he keeps going straight. And that is a horse of quality, it really is. Dag Albert again. First Luckington Lane crossing on the angle. And down towards centre walk. Janice Yeo, who is the sister of the British chef to keep Charlie Lane. And she's completed here three times before. Riding Bally free. And nicely through the Mitsubishi M. Dag Albert coming down towards the quarry. And he looks like he's going the direct route. And nice and easy, just fighting him a little bit. And a big cheese, very popular, Dag Albert. Janice Yeo at Centre Walk, and she was placed at Breeder and at Buccalo in 1995. Now this horse is by Dutch Courage, very famous sire of uh, Jenny Lauriston Clarks. Just needing a reminder there from Anne Marie Evans, who was 11th here in 1989. Now this is Daisy Dick, another one of the young riders, up and coming riders in Britain. And she has better qualifications than most. She read zoology at Oxford University. And Headley Bravo going very well there. It's the third time she's ridden here at Badminton. And just giving a good jockey's backhander there. She must have learned that from her father, Dave Dick, who won the Grand National the year that the Queen Mother's horse, Devon Locke, spread eagled himself. Dave Dick was riding ESB that time. Came past to pick up the spoils. And Daisy looking really positive here. She's never completed the cross country at Badminton and she was six after dressage. She means business today. This is the Open European champion, Lucy Thompson. Welton Molecule bred, as all the Welton horses are, by Sam Barr. And the sticky conditions just looking a little difficult, so she opts to take the longer route, having tripped up the steps there. Her best finish at Badminton was 12th, and she has fallen at the last fence in years gone by. Coming up to the little badminton drop. And the rain really making conditions difficult for her. Anne-Marie Evans, Dutch Treat, second Luckington Lane crossing. They go that slightly longer route as well. Most riders have done. The going getting very slippery now as Lucy Thompson comes to the quarry. She's going the direct route and Welton Molecules just launched himself off that. Like the show jumpers do at the Hickstead Bank sometimes and really giving Lucy Thompson no chance at all.
Daisy Dick coming towards what was has been her bogey fence in years gone by. And Headley Bravo just banking that, but jumping out really well over the second element. And she's got through the lake. That'll give her a lot of heart. And still going very, very well on Headley Bravo. Anne-Marie Evans was fifth at the World Championships in 1986. And she's nearly home. And this is John Paul Sheffield, who's only 23. It's his second time here at badminton. He completed last year, was 43rd. And he's got this closely grouped three fences to negotiate. So much thought goes into the design of courses these days, and Hugh Thomas in particular has been a great advocate of placing trees, as you can see there at the Vicarage V, to make sure that horses don't jump in places that would be unsafe, so that keeping them to the right of the Vicarage V. Now this is one of the oldest horses competing at Babington, and one of the very few we've seen go the quick route at the Mitsubishi M. 17 years old, who Ray Henry is. And Caroline Ryan Bell was 18th on him last year, 16th in 1994. They've been placed at Punchestown and at Burley. I just think the horse knows its way around without her. The world champion Vaughan Jeffries with this fantastic horse bounce. This really must be one of the most talented horses on the international scene. I should think he's worth a fortune, but Vaughan Jeffries, being a co-owner, wouldn't part with him for anything. They were second here last year, and they were third in 1994. John Paul Sheffield at the quarry, and they're going the direct route. They obviously didn't see Lucy Thompson's fall, but negotiating that very safely indeed. Bounce coming towards the hollow. And what a clever horse. He just measures it all for himself. John Paul Sheffield nearly home. He's got to be careful here, winding his way through the trees. Riders have been knocked off in the past. Oh, and actually gets a bit close to that one. Gets himself straight. And he's on his way home. Bounce coming to the shooting butt. Great aerial shot that. You see how the people are kept back from the ground that the horses are going to come down on. And Bounce knows the lake is coming up. Lives up to his name. Good bounce through. Nothing wrong with that at all. The old boy, Hooray Henry. Two fences left and still going strong. You can see why they haven't retired him yet. He really does love it. And he slightly stag jumps over the last. I think she's going for the award for the person closest to the time. She's looking at her watch, slowing right up. Chris Hannibal went out to Atlanta with Mr. Bootsy and finished 10th in the individual competition. He's very happy with that. Coming to the Mitsubishi M. And Nick Burton is probably best known for being the owner and rider of Bertie Blunt before the horse was sold to Mark Todd. The Soup Dragon not yet in Bertie Blunt's league. But Nick hoping for great things from him as they come to the little badminton drop. Go for the right-hand side. Oh, and just find a bit of uneven ground there. But still going. Chris Hannibal coming to the second Luckington Lane crossing. This had worried a few riders. The striding is a bit odd. He's going for the right-hand side, and he misses it. 
A run out for Mr. Bootsy, that's very uncharacteristic. It just runs away from you, that fence. It's so narrow, they have to be really accurate. Very honest fan. Does indeed bounce in. Nick Burton coming towards the quarry. His father, Mike, played rugby for England. Nick's made a really successful time of uh, riding. He was 12th at Burley in 1994. Completed on this horse here last year. They go the longer way around the quarry. This is a very young horse, only nine years old, Coral Cove. Polly Phillips, her second time here. She's a former European junior silver medalist. And they were placed at Bramham and Burley last year. She gets four strides in there at centre walk. Big, strongly built horse, isn't he? Now, let's see how she gets on at this Luckington Lane crossing where Chris Hannibal ran out. She gives herself more room, goes the left-hand side. It doesn't look the prettiest, but she gets away with it. Here is Chris Hannibal, who had that run out earlier on. Coming towards Keeper's Brush. That's actually one of the biggest fences on the course at four foot seven, but it jumps extremely well. Now, Robert Lemieux, equal second after the dressage, but he picked up 4.8 penalty points on the steeplechase. Very unusual, that. And in fact, it's moved him right down to 10th place. Shows you how closely packed everyone is there after the dressage. At the lake. And he goes the straight way through. Forty-five year old Eric Smiley riding for Ireland. He's a grandfather now and he's ridden at every major championship since the Barcelona Olympics, but in fact not that many times here at Badminton. He was 12th here in 1995. Now most of the riders have taken the quicker left-hand side of the Beaufort staircase, and Robert Lemieux no exception to that. Justin A's coming to the quarry Nico now. And Karen Doesn't look as if he's going that fast. Jumping and in fact, although this is undoubtedly the shorter route, it's debatable how much well, quicker it is because you have to check that Short much coming into the first point. element. Justin A's just beginning to look tired. For France, Jean-Louis Bijot and the Anglo-Arab bred Twist La Beige. His first time here, the European champion from 1993, and he was sixth at Burley last year. Getting a clever short stride in there. Now, Eric Smiley said he'd given up the booze for a week or two before badminton, not that he drinks that much anyway but he'll have a celebratory drink tonight because it's going very, very well on Enterprise. Oh, having said that, he just has a nervous moment there at Huntsman's Hangover. Now for Germany, Bettina Overesch Booker on the bronze team in Los Angeles and for the World Games in 1994. This combination went to Atlanta. But only their third time here at Badminton. Negotiating the most natural part of the course. Two hedges and on to centre walk. Twist La Beige. Just two fences left. And still going pretty well. Final fence, the Mitsubishi Garden, and on to the finish line, a quick wave to his fans. Inside the time as well. 
As always, a big crowd around the lake hoping for the splashes, but there weren't as many of them this year. Bettina Overesh Booker successfully negotiating the quick route. And the course in general has been riding a lot better, a lot more smoothly than it had done in previous years. There were, of course, though, the unfortunate ones. O'Connor and Biko, the last ones you saw there, just running out of room at the lake. Now this is Pippa Funnel, married now to the show jumper William Funnel, and Bits and Pieces, who's half thoroughbred, half tinker pony. And it's got the speed of one with the canniness of the other. He's only 10 years old, and they won Blenheim in 1995 together. Pippa's been placed here and at Burley came up through the junior and young rider ranks. This horse will become a real favourite with the crowd because he's such an extraordinary colour. He's also very, very brave. William Fox Pitt led here on Chaka in 1995 and then the horse failed the vet. This is Cosmopolitan, the horse he took to Atlanta, and in fact it's the first time the horse has been to badminton. But he did win Bramham, and is perfectly capable of coping with this. William Fox Pitt, one of the tallest riders on the circuit. He can really wrap his legs around a horse, and he's completed here four times. How will he cope with the lake? Takes plenty of riding. And onto the pickups. Oh, in fact, he gives that a real clout. It's lucky they don't belong to anyone. They wouldn't be very happy. Pippa Funnel. Bits and pieces at the second Luckington Lane crossing. They go the slightly longer way. Such a bonny horse. And the long run down to the three fences closely together. Beautifully over that charisma beam. And you want a horse that's going to help you with the steering here. As they do that S bend and line up to get that straight route at the corner. That's spot on. Swish of the tail. He's enjoying himself. Now Paula Tornquist only started to ride seven years ago and she's a pilot for Scandinavian Airways and a real character. She absolutely adores this horse, Monaghan. And he does seem extremely talented. She's had lots of help from Anna Herman and the other Swedish riders. But quite a daunting thing. Just has a good look at the Sarancester rails. Quite a daunting thing to come here to badminton, although they did go clear in Atlanta. William Fox Pitt. Huntsman's nearly home. Now he's going to have to duck his head, because there won't be a lot of room, not for a tall man, and he bends himself almost double, look at that. Pippa Funnel sees a long stride there at the steps and bits and pieces having to stretch for all three of them, getting away with it. And he's still pretty keen coming into the quarry. Lands very sharply after the log, which is exactly what you want. And then she can just push on for home. Now, Paula Tornquist will have seen a lot of things flying planes, but never anything quite like this. 
Oh, and she's slightly unbalanced there, but Monaghan keeps going straight. And with a bit of encouragement there, safely through, she gives a whoop of delight. And at 33, it takes some guts to start doing this sort of thing. Mary King on star appeal, who's very much taken over as her top horse from King William. They actually fell at this very same fence last year. She'll be concentrating hard this time. And they're safely over, relief. And <laughs> she gives a little wave and a punch in the air. Mocking herself, I think. And Mary, who finished with such a good domestic season last year, after the disappointments of Atlanta. Hoping that this horse can really make his way up the ranks. Paula Tonquist going the long way at the quarry. She won't mind time faults. She just wants to get round. And both her and Monaghan looking as if they're really enjoying themselves. It all adds to the colour of badminton, doesn't it? Now, Lara Velata part of the Italian team for the European Championships and for the Olympic Games in Atlanta. Riding Nikki Dow, who's just making heavy weather of those hedges. She's based in Turin. And this horse, 12 years old. As they come towards center walk, these two big hedges, just having a real look at that ditch as well. She's going to have to keep her concentration about her. Now, which side of the Luckington Lane crossing will they go? Most riders opting for the left-hand side. And again, he's looking at those ditches. And she does the same. Left-hand side, much safer. Not long to go for Paula Tornquist. She's only got the Mitsubishi Garden to go, and she will have completed her first ever badminton. And that will be something to tell her passengers about. She's done it. So a clear a round. Lucy Jennings, who went clear here in 1995 and in 1996, when she very nearly fell at the water. Diamond Peddler. Athletically through the Mitsubishi M. In fact, Lucy was reserve for the British team in Atlanta. As they come round to the Sirencester rails, three foot eleven by five foot six. These rails, but so inviting that they've been jumping really well. Mary King in seventh place after a dressage score of 50. That's all within a fence of the leader, Ian Stark. So a fast clear, and she's right in contention. Through the gallant hollow. Lucy Jennings coming to that second Luckington Lane crossing the Irish bank. Up the bank. And oh, that fence is just causing so many problems. It's it's really narrow there, and any horse who thinks twice, and I'm afraid, heads off towards the loo rather than jumping the fence Jennings itself. The she lane. turns around, deciding to jump it in the same point again to make sure the horse knows what she's talking about, and he certainly does Star now. Uh, Star three, appeal. Three, Look how wide that three, shooting three. butt is. Six foot three across, almost as wide as the horse himself, and the crowds await the approach of Mary King. How will this horse fare at the lake? Oh, he knows what it's all about. Mary sits tight. The crowd give a cheer. And you can see them all gathered around there despite the weather. Lara Villata clear so far. On oh, Nikki Dow. Nice up those steps. Having to chase him on a bit. I think she thinks she's not going to make the time. Real determination. As they come towards the drop. And safely negotiate all those humps. 
Now this horse is owned by Ben Hardaway, the master of foxhounds of the Midland Hunt in America, ridden by Nigel Taylor, whose best result here at Badminton was 14th in 1985. He's a very keen rugby player. We pick them up, coming across Luckington Lane, first Luckington Lane crossing. Nigel finished 10th in the European Open Championships in 1995. Very experienced. Never quite reached the heights that possibly he would have done if one really decent horse had come along. And his sister Anne-Marie Evans went round earlier. I'm sure she's told him all about the course, where the problems are, and this has been one of them. A number of horses we've seen just duck out as they come off the road and that narrow fence. The other side of the Luckington Lane. What's the Frenchman going to do? Ah, he's honest enough. Lucy Jennings, diamond peddler we saw run out earlier on at that second Luckington Lane crossing coming towards Huntsman's Halo. One, two, three strides in there and wending her way through the trees. Just getting a bit tired now. It's a long old course, four and a half miles and they've got to be fit enough. Now Star Appeal coming to the quarry. And going the longer way there, Mary King obviously feels that this time is well within reach for a horse of this quality. We've seen plenty of people post extremely fast times, including Blythe Tate on Chesterfield. He said his watch has stopped and he wasn't sure how fast he was going. And Ian Stark as well on his first horse, Arakai, well within the time. Chris Bartle, better known as the uh, team dressage trainer for the British team. And this is word perfect, a nine-year-old. Mary King very nearly home. Has she got the time right? We think she probably has. Star Appeal still full of running. And a much happier ride for her than this time last year. Well done, Mary. Big grin from her. She's always so happy when things go her way. Clear round and no time penalties. Punches the air. Chris Bartle. He was third at Blenheim last year and fifth at Bramham on this horse, a really promising youngster. On he comes to the Sirencester rails. Not hanging about. And the weather's cleared up again. Nigel Taylor with the Frenchman coming towards Huntsman's. That look of determination on his face. He's really, really concentrating. He gets two strides in there. Doesn't look the easiest ride in the world, the Frenchman. Now here is the champion from 1995, Bruce Davidson on Eagle Lion for the United States. Bruce was injured last year and couldn't come and ride this horse. He was a very frustrated viewer. On the team that won the silver medal in Atlanta. And now 47 years old. Must be one of the most experienced riders in the world. Word Perfect and Chris Bartle. Still going very well. He was ninth after dressage, so he should be. We said he was the dressage trainer earlier. This horse would get plenty of marks for good looks. He really would. Bruce Davidson, Luckington Lane crossings. Really determined. A 
And this horse is owned by George Strawbridge, who's better known for owning racehorses like Selkirk, who was champion miler a couple of years ago. And he's in fact not at Babington because he's in France watching his horse run in the French 1000 guineas. Now, Andrew Nicholson, for him, riding only one horse must seem like a day off. Normally, he's riding five or six at any given time. He's had to whittle it down to one horse, and he's chosen Cartoon, on whom he was 12th here last year. He was second at Burley last year, and he rode this horse in the bronze medal winning team in Atlanta. Really hard worker, Andrew Nicholson. Always bringing on young horses and selling them or keeping them if he thinks they're good enough. Chris Bartle. Ooh, plenty of encouragement needed. Sit tight, sit tight, Chris. Oh, he was very lucky not to get a ducking there. But <laughs> as he was halfway out, I think the horse thought, maybe I'm safer not to jump this. At only nine years old, he'll be back another year and proves that he can get it right. And away over the pickups. Bruce Davidson coming towards the gallant hollow on Eagle Lion. Again, he was one of the international, oh my word. He was one of the international riders who had to choose just one horse. So he chose Eagle Lion rather than Squelch. Cartoon. Second Luckington Lane crossing. And it's amazing how these top riders make the tricky fences look so easy. All about timing and accuracy and concentration and all the other things that go towards making a great cross-country rider. And that Andrew Nicholson undoubtedly is. They just stumble there slightly, which slightly throws their stride out for that charisma beam. But Andrew Nicholson recovering and all these riders will have walked the course at least three times which is why they make it look so easy they've worked out the lines they're going to take the exact direction they're going to come in at these fences something like the Vicarage V they've got a tree ahead of them and they line up with that and jump it in just the right spot now here is the leader after the dressage Ian Stark and Stanick Ghost the only rider ever to have finished first and second at badminton. He did that in 1988. Four, three, two, one, go. Good luck. And how the butterflies in the tummy must be flying around as that countdown happens. Away they go. They need to be clear inside the time. And he will once more be the overnight leader. Stanic Ghost away to the first fence safely on his way. He had a very uncharacteristic fall in Atlanta, just tripping coming out of the water. And that was when the British team knew it wasn't going to be their year. But Stanick goes normally so consistent cross-country. He's fast, agile, honest, all the things that you'd want a horse to be. Owned by Lady Hartington, who in fact can't bear to watch him go cross-country. Bruce Davidson now coming to the quarry they're going the long route and as you can see you don't have to hold up at all or check on the long route so it really doesn't waste you an awful lot of time but Bruce Davidson's dressage not up to his normal standard and he's really not in the running at all 46th after dressage this is the man who set the pace 46.2 his dressage score keeping him ahead of the likes of David O'Connor. And he's going to get support from the crowd the whole way round because they really do enjoy watching Ian Stark ride. He's 45 years old now. He's been at the game a long, old time, based up in Scotland. Lovely aerial shot there of the Sirencester rails. Big and solid and wide, and Stanick Ghost just steps over them. Now you'd think this was a slightly easier section of the course, Luckington Lane crossings and centre walk. But Ian Stark, like every top athlete, says you have to focus and really concentrate for every single one of these 31 fences. It's never over till it's over. Bruce Davidson, well it is over for him now. He's over the last, on towards the finish. And Eagle Lion is clear.
towards the gallant hollow now. Stanek goes full of running. You can see there the concentration on Ian Stark's face. And that's one of the best we've seen go through there, getting it absolutely right. He checks his watch. He'll do that plenty of times on the way around. Andrew Nicholson and Cartoon. We saw them earlier. Not the smoothest of rounds. And in fact, just having a duck out there at the top of the steps, I couldn't see what was wrong with his approach, but obviously he just wandered off a straight line. And just wasn't quite right. The horse not helping him. Textbook. Textbook stuff. That is how you jump the lake at Badminton. He's the last one on the course. Just breaking into trot there a bit. I think the horse thought it was all over as the crowd started to cheer. Andrew Nicholson, he's already had that run out. His chance has definitely gone. But he's still nursing Cartoon home. The horse, as we said before, just not looking quite on form. Who's going to go the long way? Again, like Mary King and so many others we've seen, he thinks the time is easy, so there's no point taking any risks at all. He has to go clear, and that is the main thing. And the crowd have waited all day to see him. They really have. Rather like when you're watching a big golf tournament, they'll sort of drift to follow him round the course. Huntsman's halo. I should think he'll jump this in two strides. Two certainly does. Now Ian, you're nearly home, you're nearly home. The home crowd so much wanting to see him win this trophy because this horse if any, really deserves it. Overnight leader last year, but two fences down in the show jumping, dropping them right down to sixth place. The same thing would happen here. He really won't be able to afford any mistakes in the show jumping. But just two more fences on the cross country course and he's fighting him. He's saying, look, you get back here and concentrate. And on they go. They're gonna make the time. They're definitely gonna make the time. He's checking both watches. <laughs> One more fence, one more fence. They've done it. And Ian Stark will hold on to his lead after dressage. 46.2 the score he stays on. Very relieved. He's so fond of this horse. He was so emotional afterwards he could hardly speak. Ian Stark then with the narrowest of leads, just 2.8 ahead of David O'Connor on Custom Made. Mary King there in third on Star Appeal, just one fence separating those top three. Then Andrew Hoy and Darian Powers and Linda Algotson with Time Force just moving down to fifth place. Fantastic performance though from Eric Smiley for Ireland. He's sixth. William Fox Pitt on Cosmopolitan pretty close on 55.6. Those faults on the steeplechase for Robert Lemieux moving him down to eighth place. Chesterfield ninth and Pippa Funnel moving up from 24th to 10th. Now traditionally on the Sunday morning a crowd gathers to watch the final veterinary inspection. This is to make sure the horses are fit and sound to take part in the show jumping. And just an ace with Robert Lemieux you can see here wasn't quite level. and He had to be withdrawn as did Darian Powers who was in fourth place with Andrew Hoy. So the two horses in fourth and eighth not continuing. This is probably the most nerve-wracking moment for the riders and for the crowd. There's nothing they can do about it if the horse isn't sound. They were waiting for the overnight leader. Here he is, Ian Stark and Stanick Ghost, hoping that he would still be 100% after the speed and endurance. Away they go. And as you can see there, looking fit and well after the rigours of yesterday's cross country. He's got to turn and come back. And the crowd are waiting. But they know their horses, they can see his sound. 
Traditionally, all the horses that pass the inspection parade in the main arena before the top 20 competitors tackle the show jumping phase. The torrential rain did not stop the proceedings, but some of the riders were concerned as to how the going might be affected. The capacity crowd, many of whom were not under cover, braved the elements and luckily, just before the jumping started, the weather abated. The show jumping is always testing and even riders like Kerry Milliken get caught unawares. One of the frustrations of this sport. As the competition drew towards its climax, the tension was mounting because it was obvious that this was a fairly difficult show jumping course for these horses who had been so pumped up for the cross country the day before. Always difficult to bring them back to fences that knock down. And with five penalties, four a knockdown and ten for a refusal, you couldn't afford any mistakes. Pippa Funnel here on bits and pieces going well at this point. The horse showing plenty of enthusiasm. As they come across the arena to this big parallel. And the ground very slippery and wet after that early shower, but luckily the rain cloud's holding off. And that one's gone. That's a knockdown, and that'll move her down the table. But still a good badminton on reflection for this horse because he's only young, plenty to learn yet. As they come into the double. Two strides in there. And just the one fence down. Chesterfield now and Blythe Tate. They were ninth after the cross country. But such an experienced rider. He knows that a clear round could move him right up the order. Let's see him through this double. And that's nice. Looking around. The big wide fence to an upright. Swinging back round on, his, on himself, the stadium absolutely packed and barely a whisper as he jumps through the treble. One more fence to go and he is clear. Fox Pit do. In seventh place. And Cosmopolitan looking very relaxed. William having to concentrate so hard. The eventers often get criticized by purist show jumpers because they can't understand why we don't jump more clear rounds in horse trials. But they don't have to come and jump these fences after they've jumped 31 big solid timber ones. And that's why. Cosmopolitan going nicely though. Clear over the triple rail. And taking it all in. So much pressure. Through the treble though, and a nice clear round. Eric Smiley for Ireland, after that wonderful cross country. That left them in sixth place. But this horse not the best in the show jumping arena. Eric's gonna have his work cut out. An Enterprise just fighting him in rattling that one but it stays up he hasn't got any fences in hand after William Fox pick going clear on Cosmopolitan and that one's gone that one's gone what a shame Smiley, such a character. He was so thrilled with that cross-country round. 
He said he was going to have a gin to celebrate, but I'm afraid Enterprise finding it slightly difficult to come back into the show jumping arena. That's another one gone. That's 10 faults. This is dropping him down the order all the time. And still a few tricky fences to come. Seems to jump the bigger ones all right. <laughs> it's the small ones like that. Three fences. That moved him down to 12th. This is Linda Algertsen for Sweden after that good dressage. She had a few time faults cross country, but in fourth place after Darian Powers was withdrawn at the final vet's inspection. And she's getting close to them, but clear so far. Got all the stopping gear on this horse. And they've rattled that. It stayed there, though. It stayed there. Into the double. It's close to the first part. Out over the second part, all right, though. She's living dangerously. Crowd, ooh and ah, they know she's pretty lucky. Now then. Oh, that middle one has gone. It was asking to happen. It has gone, but just one fence down. Over the last. And that'll just move her down one place to fifth. Mary King and Star Appeal. Gosh, hasn't she had some moments in this show jumping arena? King William, one remembers, knocking poles flying. But this horse is more reliable. She's in third place after the cross country. She's got one fence in hand. She can have one down and still keep that third position. Mary, who's done so much work on her show jumping over the years. With a horse like this, though, and I suppose with King William, it so much depends on how they're feeling on the day. And Star Appeal does seem to be behaving himself. A ditch under there, just making them really pick up down to the double. It's a little bit close to that second element, but he's all right. And they can't hang about because the time here is also quite tight, and a few of the earlier riders were picking up the odd time fault. It's all so close, she doesn't want to do that. Just getting a little bit flat. She gets him back together again to come through this treble. And oh, and he just takes the last element. And the crowd sigh. Ah, one fence down. But she still holds on to third place at the moment. Two horses left. And here's the man who can really put the pressure on. David O'Connor and custom made. This horse has had his moments show jumping, but he's certainly improved over the last year or so. And a clear round for him would mean that Ian Stark would have to go clear as well. And we know that Stanic Ghost isn't the best of show jumpers. And only one American has ever won here at Babington. That was Bruce Davidson and Eagle Lion. David O'Connor hoping to become the second. They had one fence down here last year when they finished third behind Mark Todd on Bertie Blunt. But it's looking pretty smooth this time round. As they swing round to the big parallel. And his wife, Karen O'Connor, will be nervously waiting in the collecting ring. 
he said that the disappointing thing is they never seem... Oh, gosh, he just rattled that, but it stayed there. The disappointing thing is they never seem to have their peaks in their riding career at the same time. And certainly it hasn't been a good badminton for her. Custom made really looking at the water ditch there. Coming into the double. And he's still clear. He's still clear. Chef to keeper of the American team, Mark Phillips, will have had a word or two with him. And said, you must just keep concentrating. Because these fences come down so easily. He's just got the treble and the last fence to go. Just the last. And that really is going to put the pressure on Ian Stark. A superb clear round there for David O'Connor. The crowd, although they're mainly British, giving him a big cheer. They appreciate decent riding when they see it. And that's better than decent. That is really, really good. Now, oh, poor Ian Stark. As he comes into the arena, oh, good hand from David O'Connor. He says, good luck, mate. And a huge roar from the crowd. They so want this horse to go clear. They would love to see Ian Stark win the Mitsubishi Badminton Trophy. But he has got nothing. He really has got nothing in hand, just 2.8. He cannot have a fence down, not one single fence. And Stanek goes such a hard ride in the show jumping arena. Away they go. Oh, and it's gone. It's all over. The first fence has gone. David O'Connor is champion. And Ian Stark has now really got to concentrate, not have any more down, because he will move right down the order. But it's all over, and he knows it. How disappointing. Oh. Mary King knows just what this feels like. Oh, number three down. And he's rattling them. Such a wonderful horse, but he just finds it really difficult to come back to the discipline of show jumping after he's done his favorite bit, the cross country. He's running away from Ian the whole time. That's completely demolished. That's four fences down. 20 penalties to add already. Poor Ian. Oh. So hard to keep concentrating when everything is going wrong. Isn't that typical? You have five fences down and then jump clear through the treble. Clear over the last as well, and the crowd give a generous cheer, but Ian Stark knows. He had it in the palm of his hand, but David O'Connor will be the name on the trophy, standing there with his wife, Karen. David getting a big kiss from Mary King, and congratulations from Andrew Nicholson. Everybody around the Vicky Latter saying well done to him. But poor Ian Stark. Oh, and in fact, David sees him coming out and goes over to shake his hand. Very sporting. So David O'Connor, top of the tree. Mary King second there on Star Appeal. William Fox Pitt in third on Cosmopolitan. Blythe Tate with that clear round, moving up to fourth place on Chesterfield. And Linda Algertson fifth. Then in sixth place, we had Sally Clark on Squirrel Hill for New Zealand. Daisy Dick will be thrilled with that seventh place on Headley Bravo, her best ever finish here. Bruce Davidson on Eagle Lion in eighth. Pippa Funnel and Vaughan Jeffries ninth and tenth. And here is the Mitsubishi Motors Badminton Trophy presented by Princess Michael of Kent. And in the middle there, Stephen Dixon, the managing director of the Colt Car Company. 
And David O'Connor, just joined there by the owner of Custom Made, Mr. Zara, who will also get a winner's cheque of £25,000. Plenty for them to be smiling about. And David O'Connor sets off on his lap of honour, winner of the Mitsubishi Motors Badminton Trophy 1997. Custom Made and David O'Connor for the United States of America. The crowd salute him.